Hi, John with eTrailer. If you're looking for an easy way to get trailer wiring on your 2023 Toyota RAV4, check out this option from Kurt. Let's take a closer look at this. Now, this is the Kurt T Connector 4 Pole Trailer Wiring Kit. It's, of course, 4 Pole, which is one of the most popular uh, connectors for light duty trailers or maybe even some of the cargo carriers that have lighting on the back. It's going to have your basic functions. You have a ground, you're going to have your running lights, you're going to have your left turn and right turn and stop. Now this is a great kit uh, for someone that say doesn't tow all the time. Um, only reason say, I'm saying that is because it installs really easy and it's out here when you need it to hook up to your trailer and then when you don't need it, you can simply just store it in your compartment back here and it's good to go. So they call it the T-connector because it connects up on either side of the car and it hooks into your factory harnesses. There's no splicing, you're not cutting wires. Now this vehicle includes a powered converter box. Um, what does that mean? Bottom line, it protects your vehicle's sensitive electronics from surges and shorts. So when it comes time to tow, you simply have to pull out your full pull, four pole flat and drape it over the edge of your weather stripping. As far as installation on this, this is a very easy kit to install. It installs, like I said, uh, it right into the factory wiring and the connectors on the left side and the right side of the vehicle here. Now you do have to remove the inside panels um, and this, this panel across the middle here. Uh, you also have to run maybe a power line from the front of the car or if it's a hybrid you have the battery back here but other than that it's not too hard it seems a little daunting but we can show you how to do it we installed this on this vehicle stick around we'll show you how we did it all right let's begin the wiring install first thing we're going to do is lift up the hatch cover here and we're just going to set this off to the side it's going to give us some room to work inside the hatch you'll notice um, a trim tab right here that needs to get popped out. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and use a flathead screwdriver and I put some tape on it just to keep from marking up the surface here. And what you're going to do is insert it into the flat spot and just pop out on it. And that'll pull out. Now directly straight down from here, you're going to see a tie down hook on the back side and that's a 10 millimeter bolt. We'll go ahead and remove that as well. Go ahead and do that on the other side, on the passenger side as well. Now this next section is gonna be the center section here, and it's just held in place by pins inside of here. Now we have tools available. These are uh, plastic trim panel tools. These will kind of help you out. Um, sometimes these come up pretty easy and sometimes they don't. So you just wanna take it and just start wiggling while you're pulling up. So over here, you'll have to apply some upward force at the edges here to pull that up. And it comes straight up. You can see the clips here that are holding it down. So go ahead and set this off to the side. Now we're back on the driver's side. Go ahead and grab the bottom of this and kind of lift and pull out. And just slide your fingers up. Again, this is helpful sometimes to have trim panel tools to get back there. Now we don't have to pull this completely out, just this is going to give us enough room to access our tail light harness and this is where we're going to be plugging the Kurt wiring harness into. One thing we noticed um, on our car, we do have the optional subwoofer here and it was making it difficult for us to get back here to mount the box. So we're going to do one more step here um, and it's going to remove this panel here. It's going to be two Phillips head screws. You have one in this location and one over here in this location. And then go ahead and kick your seats forward and kind of pull up and out. You'll see the connectors where it connects in and just push that forward and it's really going to give us 
a little a lot more room here to mount the converter box and to access our wiring now on the passenger side it's going to be removed about the same uh, if you don't have a hybrid. Now, if you have a hybrid, you're gonna have a tray here that needs to pop out first and your battery will be down here. Ours is not a hybrid, so we're just gonna take this apart the same way we did the other side. I'm gonna lift at the bottom and kind of pull out at the same time. And then slide your hand up. And again, this will be able doesn't have to come all the way out. This is going to allow us to access the tail light harness on the passenger side. So let's take a real quick look at the harness before we go ahead and install it. On here, you're going to have a black and a white wire. Now, the black wire is going to be a uh, positive 12 volt from our battery up in the front of the car. We're going to be running that line later in the video, but that'll be our 12 volt positive connection. The white with the ring terminal is going to be a ground. We're going to go ahead and ground it back here with the supplied sheet metal screw. Now you're also going to have, of course, your four-way flat connector. This can get stored either in your trunk or you can run it down below to come out. And then you're going to have the connections for your driver's side. And that's going to be the red, brown, and yellow wire. And this will connect up right to your factory harness up behind the panels here. And then you have the passenger side, which we're going to run along right here. Let's go ahead and get into it. So we're going to be looking for the left side, this driver's side, and it's going to be these colors here, the yellow, white, red, and brown. And the connector that we're looking for is going to be this one. Go ahead, and there's a tab here. Now, if you're having trouble getting back here like I was, go ahead and grab a flathead screwdriver and see if you can see this. Push down on these two center tabs and then pull back and that'll help you disconnect it. We'll take our wiring harness and the one end will fit and plug directly into our connector. And the other end goes in to the other empty spot. When we have our, our driver's side connection hooked up, um, there needs to be a little bit of planning where we're gonna put uh, the converter box here um, because we need to have a ground and we need to have power. Of course, the power, again, it's gonna come later in the video when we run it up. Um, so there's plenty of wire for both of that. The ground we can use um, where the subwoofer is mounted to the frame. That's a perfectly good ground. So I think we're going to end up mounting the box up here. Um, the other thing we need to watch is if we have enough wire to run over to our passenger side. And I went ahead and checked, and we do. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and mount this up uh, above the subwoofer right now, and we'll show you how we did it. So I mounted the converter box behind the subwoofer. I was going to mount it to it originally. Um, it comes with either double stick tape or you can zip tie it. But my thoughts on this is this is a subwoofer. It's going to vibrate a lot and you don't want to hear um, vibrating noise back here. So I went ahead and mounted it with the self-tapping screw. Uh, and of course, when you do that, you want to make sure there's nothing behind here. And we were good for that. I went ahead and um, did the same thing with the ground wire up here and then ran, zip tied all these wires up so they're not touching the subwoofer, so you're not gonna hear a rattling noise back here. I ran the rest of the wires behind the subwoofer here. That's gonna leave our power wire, which uh, later in the video we'll be running up through this plug here. And then of course we have the four-way flat wire, and then this is gonna come over to the passenger side. Speaking of the passenger side, um, let's just go ahead and show you how we're gonna do this here. I went under here, we're gonna run this along the rail, and then our connections are going to be in the same location on this side. We'll go ahead and pull this back. And it's going to be this plug right here. We'll see if I can get it this time. Probably not. I'll still have to use the flathead screwdriver. Pop that out. And then don't forget to run your wires. 
underneath your plastic here and around the back side. And we'll plug into our connector. And then plug into the factory connector. These kits are great. There's no splicing, no nothing. These fit the factory connectors nice and tight. And you just won't have any problems out of them. The last connection that we have to make here is going to be the power wire, and that's going to run from the front of the car on this. If you have a hybrid, you can run it from the battery back over here. So uh, the kit has, is, does include um, some power wire. We're going to go ahead and run it, and we'll show you where we ran the connections from the battery, through the engine compartment, under the car, and then finally up to the back to the power converter. Now up here in the front, we've got the battery on the driver's side, and we've got our power lead here. The kit comes with a fusible link and everything else, and we're going to do that later in the video. But I just wanted to show you that I kind of ran it around back here and then down the firewall and underneath. When you're running this, of course, you want to make sure that you don't, uh, that you avoid like sharp objects or uh, rotating objects. This is front wheel drive, so you're going to have your drive shafts up here. Of course, you're going to have the exhaust. So just when you're routing this, keep in mind while you're doing that to keep the power wire away from those. So underneath the car here, we ran it down on the, well, pretty much along with the brake lines coming down here, and we're going to end up zip tying those, and I ran them along this pan. Now, this pan has these push connectors here. You can use a screwdriver and pop them out, and I slid the wire back. You've got one here and here. This one is a Phillips head screwdriver. And you can see, you can see where the line is right here. We just ran it and tucked it back behind this plastic. So coming off the back of the pan here, we've got the end of the wire. Um, our final location is going to be over by the exhaust. So while we run this, again, we want to watch for hot and sharp objects. We'll go up and over the suspension because nothing moves up here. And I'm going to go to this side of this mount because the wheel's over here. We don't want anything to come loose and attach to the wheel. We'll go ahead and pull up the slack here. And then we're going to be able to zip tie the, the line to this and it'll be nice and tight. And our final location is going to be that plug that I talked about earlier that was straight down from the converter box. So we'll feed that up through the bottom of the car. And while we're under here, we'll go ahead and use the supplied zip ties that came in the kit. And we'll attach this wire to the factory loom. Now this is the power line that we ran up from under the car on the driver's side. Now the hole that we ran it through had a rubber grommet, and we're going to go ahead and run that wire through there. If you take something sharp, you can be even just a, a uh, number one Phillips screwdriver, and we're just going to poke this through. And then we can run our power line. Run the wire through. And we can replace the grommet in the kick panel here. Trim the power line that we ran. Now the kit comes with butt connectors and a ring terminal for the front. So all of this stuff you don't have to go out and get. Tighten it down, give it a tug, make sure it's secure. Same thing here. So that's going to do it for our connections at the back of the car. Now we went ahead and made the connections with, again, the supplied butt connectors. This is our power wire coming from the back of the car. And this is the supplied fusible link here. It does come with a fuse. We're going to put that in at the very last step. 
I'm going to run this around behind the battery and we'll connect up up here. Now, this is a 12 millimeter socket. Of course, you want to be careful since your battery is hooked up. You can either disconnect the negative to do this or just be careful where your metal wrench is going in here. Tighten that back down. And then we can go ahead and insert the supplied fuse and put the dust cap on. Now with all of our connections made, before we put the car back together, it's a good idea to go ahead and test and make sure that everything's working properly. Now we have a four pole tester available here at eTrailer. This is what we're going to be using today. We can turn on some parking lights and make sure that our running lights are working. And I'll go ahead and shut those off now. We'll hit the brakes. You can see the brakes are working. Do a left turn and a right turn. Now with our functions working properly uh, and everything's tested good, we can go ahead and put the car back together. And that was a look at the Curt T-Connector 4-pull trailer wiring harness on our 2023 Toyota RAV4.